Yo, and welcome to the 101st episode of Lake of Rage, a Pokemon trading card game podcast. I'm your host, as always, Kevin Clementi, aka Mellow underscore Magic Herb, and I'm joined today by a very special tempered guest host joining us. I'm going to say fresh, although it may not be that fresh, off the day two in Fort Wayne regionals. Yeah, uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Oh, heck. They're all, <laughs> they were all like weeks back to back. It's, they're all the same thing. Same format, same place. I can't get there. Anyway, <laughs> fresh off the day two in Charlotte <laughs> regionals with Vika Volt, we have Locke, aka the Locke. Locke, thanks for joining us this week. Yo, what's going on, Mello? <laughs> so I got a very special episode for y'all. We're, we're, recording this at the end of day one of euic so we don't know day two we don't know who won you all know who won congratulations to Tord reklev on winning another ic or something i don't know <laughs> but uh we're not gonna be talking about the results because we don't know if you'd like to hear the results listen to literally every other pokemon trading card game podcast that is going to read you off the results through the entire it'll be on, it'll be on next week's uh, podcast anyway so. exactly we were definitely going to try and get someone from euic for it next week but this week we have one that is actually very relevant and i think all of us as content creators have kind of missed this subject a lot and that's going to be local tournaments cups and challenges so we're going to spend two parts of this episode the first one is just going to be talking about what are cups and challenges as in what's the tournament setting like what do you need to bring what are you actually doing when you're there you know just kind of like what is a cup rate challenge Challenge because plenty of you have been to regionals and it's different it is surprisingly different even though you're still playing pokemon so we're going to get into what are cups and challenges how do you find them all that other good stuff and then the second part will be how to be successful in them because both Locke and i have pretty good success rates in our local cups and i'm going to say my challenges are not and i'll explain why when we get to talk about what they are but <laughs> cup wise we're both pretty solid and we both have very different approaches because we live in very different regions. So I think you'll be able to get quite a bit out of it. Now, if you are someone who's like, oh, they're going to explain what cups and challenges are. I already know that. Feel free. There's a timestamp below in the description of whatever. You can skip forward to the what are our strategies on how to be successful in a cup or a challenge. But if you're new, you're not sure, or you've just never been to them and you kind of know the concept, we're going to cover a lot of the like, well, what is the difference between a cup and a regional? Anyway, there's so many new players during COVID. We need to put this topic out. <laughs> exactly. Yes, this is this is huge. And I think Cups and Challenges are going to be a lot bigger than they were before, too, which I think is going to be super interesting mm -hmm. of what our experiences pre-COVID are going to be like if we talk about this again in, say, July, when we have just massive places and things like that. Anyway, let's start with what Cups and Challenges are. So they are local tournaments, and we'll very quickly run through the like what you get out of them. And then get into the like, how do you find them and etc. So Cups and Challenges do award CP championship points. This season, at the time of recording, you get two challenge finishes that count towards your championship points for Worlds and two cup finishes that count towards your championship points for Worlds. So if you get three finishes, the two best count and the other one just goes away into the mist. Just woo, nowhere to be seen again. Those championship points are gone. You get points for top four for challenges. And Locke, this is one where I might need to help on the kicker. But cups, you get top four points for 24 or more. Sorry, 23 or less people. Top four get points. If it is 24 to 30 something, <laughs> then top eight get points. And then top 16 can get points if it is... I want to say 33 or more, but I could be making that one up as I'm talking about it. But you get championship points for them. Challenges are always top four, I believe. And if it is top eight, it has to be a ridiculously high number that no one should ever play in. In terms of challenges, you get 15 for first, 12 for second, 10 for third and fourth. In cups, you get 50, 5 0 for first, 40 in second. Top four, third and fourth place get 32. Six, seven, and eight get 25. And then if applicable, nine through 16 get 20. And I'm incredibly upset that that was all from my memory. Imagine if I use this brain power for good. <laughs> Locke, what can you add yeah, about like the championship CP point? Kicker is like 13 CP out after the next bracket after 16, so. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, that's yeah. a gigantic <laughs> number. But that's the general of like what a cup and a challenge is. Locke, what is the difference between a challenge and a cup though beyond just the championship points okay so a store is allowed to have one cup per month so for this season every store could hold 
up to three cups. One for April, one for May, and one for June. Um, but every store is only allowed one cup per season. And the season, I'm going by like quarters. Um, so it's just the Scarlet and Violet base set until the very next set. So yeah, and, um, it seems weird yeah, right so now stores, yeah. because we only have one quarter of- <laughs> in the season. But <laughs> normally it's yeah, every big set release and there's four of them total. Um, no one's ever announced this yet, but if there is like a July locals, then it would count as like quarter zero for like the 2024 season. So, and that happened in the 2019 season. I remember it was like right before the worlds that had the rotation in it, where they had league cups that were allowed to happen in July. So pre worlds yeah. for the next season. And that had never been done before. And so we don't know for sure what's going to happen there. It's not normal, but anyone who tells you they know what's going to happen is lying or received information that broke some sort of NDA and can get someone fired. So don't believe them anyway for that reason. So we have one cup per store. We have challenges one per month. What other differences? Is it like attendance wise? What are the cups and challenges like around you in terms of attendance? So, challenges, we get like maybe like eight <laughs> going. And then for a cup, it's usually like a minimum of like 40. Oh, wait, long. About my area. Where are you located? Yeah, this is an important one. All right. So, so I'm in like DC and like pre COVID, that was the hardest region in, <laughs> in the country by far. And sorry, Florida, you keep saying that you're the best, but it's, we had. Our A tier was five top 16 players. Our B tier was like 13 more Worlds players the, the previous year. for It was like the DC Worlds too. And then I'm in like C tier. I'm like the captain of the C tier. I'm like <laughs> that final boss in that PTCGO ladder in the first level. <laughs> Bro, the throwback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, East Coast, because I assume you have a lot within driving distance of you, right? Like not just DC, oh, yeah. but... I don't know what states yep. are around. Uh, there. Yeah, I could drive up to my parents' house and spend the weekend there, and I just do like cups there, and then I could just go down to like Southern Virginia as well, and do a bunch of cups there too as well. So, yeah, and for people listening who might not be aware of the local scene, that's a very common thing. So I'm in Washington. I'm on the exact opposite side of the country. Very different. There's not a whole lot within driving distance, but. It is not unheard of for, you know, two stores within the same area, so like Seattle or Portland or Vancouver, British Columbia, to hold cups on a Saturday and then the next one on a Sunday and then have people from, like I said, for us, it's from Portland or Vancouver or wherever, drive there and spend the weekend in the area and go to both the cups in order to get CP. That is very, very, very normal. Especially Mm -hmm. this year where you have people who are last minute trying to get that last little bit of CP because the season was a giant cluster for lack of a better term. Uh, It's going to happen too. So that is something to mentally be like, oh, is is it weird if I drive for no driving a couple hours, getting a hotel with your friends for the night on like Saturday night is nowhere near unheard of. And you're going to play against people who have driven several hours to play in a league cup. Yeah. (laughs) That was the League Cup grinder in my area, so I went to, like, every single thing. (laughs) And this just does depend on your area as well. So, you know, you might be asking, how do I actually find a cup? How do I actually find a challenge? There's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, Locke, you are the one who knows more about this than I do. I will fully admit, shout out to Jeff, I'm letting one of the local Poke Parents friend of mine just let me know when cups and challenges are <laughs> so I don't have to do any of the legwork. But uh, Locke, you do you do know what to do. So how are some of the websites yep. that you can use? All right. So pre-COVID, uh, all I did was every like Monday was just check event locator on the Pokemon.com website. Um, the, the website kind of got a really big overhaul a couple weeks ago, and it's like terrible you have to actually hit the magnifying glass to refresh all this all the like settings that you change up like every single time that you click the refresh button doesn't work (laughs) so right now i actually just use um julian's website it's uh 
pokedata.ovh slash events slash map. And we'll have that link down in the description of the YouTube comments or in your podcasting app. There's somewhere for like a note section or something like that. We'll have that linked. It is very clean. Julian has done some amazing stuff for the community in between their tweets bashing PTCGL. (laughs) They tweet some very cool tools, and this is one of them for sure. Super easy to use. It seems easier than the Pokemon.com website. I've only seen it. I haven't used it because, like I said, I have now outsourced that (laughs) to someone else who's nice enough to do it for me. But uh, and that's something else you can do, too. If you have friends from the same region, what Locke said is 100 percent. You check like once a week to see what's there because stuff gets added randomly. But if you have friends from your local region, you have a local discord, something like that. Any people from what am I? Western Washington. Feel free to DM me on Twitter. I got you. I'll invite you to the PNW, the Western Washington discord server where you can find events, stuff like that. Uh, Highly recommend if you have a group of friends have you know, go out and be like, all right, let's make a shared Google calendar. And then we all just check randomly and add stuff to there. So we all know, you know, there's, there's tons of resource out there. Is there something like that out there for you to lock? Um, usually just, it just goes by like from groups and like just going on messenger and asking people. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Every region is going to be well, very like, different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and I would check it weekly because like a lot of the stores right now just heard about the cousin challenges. So they only scheduled like their April challenge only. They have no clue when they're going to host their uh, League Cup yet. So eventually they'll host one because they want to make money, but (laughs) we don't know when. (laughs) Yeah. So I didn't mention it too. Uh, We mentioned locks, challenges and cups Uh, over here in Washington. We're pretty big area in terms of gaming, but magic is the game here. So we have a lot of game stores and we have a lot of League Cups and challenges. But in terms of challenges, I've seen as few as like five or six people. I've seen into the 20s, depending on one of the more popular stores, because they are a more casual tournament. League Cups over here, I have seen stuff less than 10 people, depending on where you're willing to drive. Anyone who has ever heard of places like Anacortes and Bremerton, uh, then you know why. And if you've never heard of those places, you can imagine then why people don't go to them. <laughs> it's several hour drive <laughs> versus like in the city, you can easily get into the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, no problem. And then there's a cap usually because, again, we're a magic place and they don't want to take away from the magic players, too. But yeah, cups versus challenges, pretty massive attendance size in between the two. <laughs> yeah, there's also a giant like price difference in between them, too, because like a challenge is like maybe like 10 bucks to 12 bucks and a cup is i've seen some that are going up to 40 dollars now so yeah this is also you can vote with your money so anyone listen to this this is something that you see people on twitter complaining about cup prices because pre-covid i don't think i ever paid more than 30 and i'm pretty sure it was always about 15 to 20 for a cup and now there's some going for like 40 uh you you don't have to go to those it is technically fine to not go play Pokemon all the time for money. So don't be afraid to be like, uh, I'm going to skip this one because you're overcharging. Or if you know the prizing's not going to be good, because some of them, like there was one that was posted, right? It was like 40 bucks, but there was a $1,000 store credit prize pool. That's pretty good. I uh, That's fine with me personally. I've paid 20 bucks, got first place, and I got a mouse pad with the store's logo on it. <laughs> and that was like that was that was way worse that was not worth anything right as i don't want this stupid mouse pad i've since thrown it away <laughs> but yep. yeah so the pricing also matters in addition to the cost so see if they have what the pricing is are they going to give you store credit are they giving you a booster box are they giving you nothing because i've met tos in the past lock i don't know if you run into this one too who are like hey pokemon didn't send us any prizing it's pokemon doesn't your entry fee is quote unquote supposed to go to prizing now are prizes mm-hmm. necessary? No, et cetera. But that's something else to be aware of. Prizing is technically, according to Pokemon, just the CP and then a League Cup first place mat. And what this one has Volpix on it says champion. It's very cute. Alolan Volpix. Yep. <laughs> and then League Challenges usually give you a card that has first, second, third, or fourth place in it with a little League Challenge stamp. I have not seen confirmation those exist currently for this quarter. Locke, have you seen them yeah. at all? Nope. Okay, so don't don't uh, don't hold us to that one, but they are pretty cool. They're also something that I do have to say, if you are a collector, first place ones for league challenges, pretty good. And they also, depending on how playable the card is, can go for a pretty penny. 
I mean, pretty pennies like 20, 30 bucks, but considering a challenge lock said 10 to 12, I've definitely paid five for a challenge like most of the time around oh, yeah. here. And yeah, you like you get a pack for that five and you can win a promo that you can easily flip for 20 bucks if you win it. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah. In terms of what to bring for a cup or a challenge, uh, you need your deck, right? 60 card, legal deck, sleeves. That's always there. Damage counters, poison burn, you know, all the usual stuff. One thing that is a little different, and some places might partner with RK9, but most local stores will not because RK9 does charge them. So you have to have a paper deck list. The paper deck list can be written out at the store. That's what I usually choose to do. I show up early, I write out the whole deck list, and I'm good to go. Locke, I know you prefer to do deck lists a little differently. So what do you do for the deck oh. list? So pre-COVID, I just went to uh, like pokegym.com and they had like a deck list builder. You could, you could even type in your name, your like uh, your age, and it'll automatically fill out like what your master is. And you also have to put down your uh, player ID number on on the deck list as well. Yeah, something and to memorize also have, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, the website had like pull downs for like if you start typing in a couple letters like B U Z, it'll just know like you just click on Buzzword G X or whatever. But um. Right now, I think the website hasn't been updated in like since pre-COVID. So, right now, uh, what I'm going to do for like a Sunday challenge that I have coming up is uh, I'm just going to go on rk9.com and just use the deck list builder from there and just print it out. And that is something too you want to know if you're someone who shows up early to things then you're fine showing up without a deck list. You can write it there. They usually have printouts, pens. If you're someone who shows up late or you're not sure how the traffic's going to be in your local area, do what Locke said. Like 100%. <laughs> have it printed and ready to go because if it starts at 11 a.m., you show up at 10.58 without a deck list, the TO is going to look at you and say, you get a round one loss while you write this out or you can't play. Like they're not going to... Some TOs might... Uh, I have not experienced ones who are super happy to delay the tournament, you know, 15, 20 minutes just for one person to write a deck list. So if you're someone who shows up late or you want to show up like, oh, the tournament starts at 11, show up a little early. Always, 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 especially if you're not pre-registered. Some places do offer pre-registration. Check the uh, Pokemon.com event. You know, some of them require you to email you. Some you have to go through their website, not the Pokemon website, but the store's website and purchase it and enter your player ID. So be sure to show up early, but especially if you don't have a deck list because you will have to write one out. And if you know you don't show up early because you are someone who has to sleep in, tournament starts at 10, you're going to wake up at 945. Have that deck list printed out and ready to go. Uh, that's one of the more common things I've seen. Challenges. Challenges are short. They are three to four rounds, usually best of one. They just go boom, 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 especially if there's eight of you there. You almost never go to time. It is best of one, 30 minutes, but you, you just play a game of Pokemon. And then once everyone's done, you play another game of Pokemon, you know. I'm going to one this Sunday, which will already have happened by the time this releases. I'm expecting, given the cap, four rounds maybe two hours total i do have some local players who play at a snail's pace so we might go to time every round <laughs> but it's probably about two hours right not that bad is that the same experience you've had lock oh yeah the challenges are usually only four or five rounds top so so pretty and chill there's no top cut for, for challenges either so yes once the switch is over the tour is over so which, to go back to my, hey, I'm bad at winning challenges, sometimes you end up with multiple people who are undefeated. <laughs> and then one person gets first based off how well their opponents did, and it's completely out of your control. I've had several challenges where I've gone 3-0 and gotten second place <laughs> because my <laughs> opponents just decided not to win more games than the other person's opponents did. Very sad. No top cut ever for a challenge, too. So it's just like straight up like, all right, you know, you play four rounds. Boro is probably going to get first. IDing gets a little weird. I've seen people do that in online, like Pumpkin, Amy, and Sunny run tournaments that are similar with no top cut, and people like ID into like, you know, so there's multiple people who are undefeated but with a draw, and so it's like first or second is completely random. Don't recommend doing that. <laughs> Play every game. <laughs> but yes, challenges, no top cut, very fast. Cups, on the other hand. Cups, technically there could be a four-round cut, cup that goes into a top four cut 
Ooh, that is a tongue twister right there. But on average, in most metro areas, you're going to run into, you know, a 30, 40 person cup, which is going to be five rounds of Swiss into a top eight cut or six rounds of Swiss into a top eight cut. The thing about uh, the worst oh, yeah. is the 20 to like 25 or 24 player tournaments. Yeah, because you do a top eight cut, but only top four gets CP. Those are killer. So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the Pokemon, the kickers for CP and the number of people for a top eight cut don't overlap one to one. And so, yeah, it's like 21 people, for example, you have to play a top eight cut. But even if you're the first seed, you get a bad pairing, you lose, you get zero CP. So you had to play a whole extra hour in order to get nothing. Those are absolutely killer. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there many times. But yeah. Oh, yeah. There's been times where I was number one seed. I lost. And the store only did top four prizes as well. So I got nothing at all for playing next an hour. That's a again, I've been there. It's so killer. I hate it. I hate it every time. Like, definitely you, you get those pokey parents and you're like, hey, we, we need you. We're like, we'll pitch in for your entry fee just so we get the extra person. So we get top eight CP and they'll go, OK, they'll go oh one drop or oh two drop or whatever while their kids playing. And then you're good to go. So, yeah, yeah recommend that sometimes. Anyway, so cups do have cuts no matter what. I don't think there's any way for a league cup to run and not have a top cut. That might not be true, actually. Yeah, I guess um, you could have like what? you have the exact. Yeah, eight, exactly. Eight. There we go. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's like uh, incredibly unlikely, but I guess it is technically possible. But league cups are significantly longer. So let's say it's about 30 people. You know, it's average pre COVID. That might not be average post COVID, but 30 people. That is five rounds of Swiss. Usually it's a pretty clean 3 1 1 record. Sometimes a 3 2 record, three wins, two losses can make it in as well. That kind of depends. You'll start to get the feel for it after you play for a little bit. But don't be afraid to ask someone who's more experienced to have like, hey, are we safe to ID here? Not your opponent. Don't ask your opponent because that gets sketchy. They're not allowed to answer that question. That could get them DQ. But asking someone else who isn't your opponent, like, hey, is this a safe ID or not? And sometimes the answer is, I don't know. But usually we're happy to help you because we don't want you to not ID because that screws up our ability to ID as well. So uh, ID is intentional draw. You can agree to tie with your opponent. I guess I should have said that too. Anyway, it's usually uh, limitless TCG has a, a really good Swiss calculator for for league cups. That is yes for like a large scale regional where people like drop at like one wonder <laughs> and that kind of throws off all their math. So, but for like a under 80 person cup or whatever is actually pretty accurate. It is. And it's usually a good bet of like, OK, this is what I have to do to make top cut. And it is a little unfortunate if you start like one, two, for example. You're never going to be the three, two that does make it into the cut. So winning is incredibly important and winning early is like completely necessary for a league cup. But anyway, so five rounds. So that right there is going to be a couple hours, but then top cut is best of three and one hour rounds, 50 minute rounds, five zero. So league cups are significantly longer and they are a bigger time investment. And because of that, I would recommend maybe bring snacks or have a dinner plan or something like that, depending on when it starts, because some stores, they have food there. You can just order the food and you're good to go. Some stores are nearby. You can walk over to Taco Bell, McDonald's, whatever. You know, we're not a sponsor, but Taco Bell, if you want to sponsor us, hit me <laughs> up. Uh, some stores are in the middle of nowhere and have no food <laughs> and you do not want to show up to one of them and be like, uh, you know, T.O.'s like, yeah, 30 minute lunch break before Top Cut starts while they do deck checks. And you're like uh what do, what do i do <laughs> like i can't drive somewhere because we're in the middle of nowhere and so those end up a little awkward so highly recommend league cups if you plan on doing well bring a snack just in case because you might be there for a good seven hours if you make it to finals and have no chance to eat food again depending on where it is or look at the menu of the store some stores here you're talking about 30 bucks for a hamburger and fries because they know you're trapped <laughs> and you're like oh that, that ain't worth it like it's a good burger but ain't that good right so leak up highly recommend if you plan on doing well bring a snack in addition to you know deck and all that other stuff extra sleeves etc lock anything else on I, usually scout, I usually scout the uh the food situation like what restaurants are close by <laughs> or like what could i eat for the cup starts so Yes, <laughs> those are it's like one of those really silly things that is actually incredibly important because regionals, 
you're probably going to be able to find food nearby. They've done a pretty good job of that. Cups? I don't know. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's a little bit about challenges and cups. Like, what are they and et cetera. Uh, if anything you don't know, feel free to DM me right in the YouTube comment section for sure. But now we're going to talk about our strategies in League Cups and challenges. How do you actually metagame and play for locals? Because it is different than a regional is. Like, pretty significantly, uh, I lock, I want you to share yours first. What is it like over in DC? What are you doing before I share mine? Because I, I know for sure that we have very different approaches and different approaches by our locals as well. So what's it like over there? All right. So you can't actually play a like S tier deck at, at my locals because everybody knows how to play against it and everybody's bringing a counter to it. So usually. In the S tier formats, uh, bringing the the very best deck is a is a way to, is the easiest way to go. O to drop, <laughs> like so that would be something like our towel. last with uh, what's it called? Freaking Lugia. Yeah, it got, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe Lugia was maybe too strong of a thing, but maybe I'm talking more like Arc and Tell back in like a uh, like the Brilliant Stars gotcha. format. Like it's like. It's the best deck, but it doesn't beat a, a handful of decks. So yeah, there's just ways to be, beat it. Whereas Lugia, <laughs> it could even beat even the best, yeah, even the best counter, it went it went fifty fifty against. So gotcha. And we have like five top sixteen players. Usually they will just play whatever same exact sixty that they just played. The previous week at the regional, so you kind of know who what they're playing, and you just kind of figure out a couple techs for those particular matchups in your deck. So I was at that was like the very best thing I did week to week. Um, like I played like pre COVID, the very last season was Cosmic Eclipse. I went nine for nine in my cups and finishes and. Every single week, I changed up like one or two cards just because, oh, this deck is getting very popular by so and so players. So let me try to counter Rahul or John Ang or Bradner or whatever. So, on the flip side, <laughs> I <laughs> Washington has a lot of good players, but we don't have a lot of like top S tier players. It's a very different vibe, right? You have there's always a few people like, you know, Cal Connors out here, incredibly good player. We have both the Gantners are here now, but they weren't in Masters before. You know, before that, it was like a lot of, I'm going to assume people like JP don't listen to this. Ah, JP would co-sign this. A lot of washed up like legends of the game play over here too. Where like, you don't know what they're going to play, but they're going to play it incredibly well. They don't know what they're going to play either though. <laughs> so it is a, a very interesting, some good players, some just absolutely amazing players who have no idea what's meta right now and aren't not even sure how they got their deck for that day and because of that my strategy has always been kind of what Locke said the bradners and angs and all of them are doing of just like i'm just gonna kind of keep bringing the same thing something that usually isn't the s tier deck but does beat the s tier deck and uh, just kind of roll over most people because my locals tend to, and I guess I'm giving them their secret that I don't know if they realize they do it. They react to the last regional by playing whatever was in that last regional. So if we're at a tournament where, um, let's go with, gosh, the Lugia format is so bad because, like you said, <laughs> Lugia <laughs> does just kind of beat everything. So if we were in a format with like Palkia, Palkia and Teleon just won the last regional. Guess what's going to show up all over the place? Palkia and Teleon. Or something else that I've noticed my locals do. I don't know if this is true of yours, Locke, but something that everyone listening should keep in mind. If someone locally does well at a tournament, like a top 16 or something, people are like, oh, the deck must be good because I know that their skill level is about the same as mine. And so people jump on that <laughs> one immediately. Like I'm going to say right now, uh, Cameron Chinoy is doing well in day one, maybe day two with... Yeah, that's coming out after. Guardy, right? So Cameron's running Guardy EX. Cameron is a very good player, but I can promise you, Cameron does well with Guardy in EUIC right now. 
people are going to play guardy because they're like, I know Cameron's a good player, but like, I think I'm like a step below him. So I'm going to all play guardy too. And so my local is going to be infested with Gardevoir because someone locally is doing incredibly well with it. And then if it wins toward plays it, et cetera, that's obviously extra fuel on that fire. But that's the type of thing that I've noticed. They will net deck the winner or net deck the local who does well, because you're kind of familiar with that person, their skill. And a lot of time it's like, Hmm, I, I think I'm like close enough to their skill level because we tend to get this idea of like, oh, I don't know Bradner. Bradner's way better than me, which is true. Bradner is way better than me. But like you're just like <laughs> <Yeah>. automatically <laughs> like, oh, I can't keep up with whatever he's doing. He's too good. But this other person, I know them. I've beaten them before. So therefore, I must be the same skill level when in reality, eh, most most even the top players are better than you most of us but you know they are not that much better and you kind of get this idea of like oh they're unbeatable or they're flawless when you don't get to play against them all the time i don't know lock do you any of that stuff you have something you also see from your oh. general player base um i actually did see the uh the net deck the top players like usually at the beginning of a format i would tell anybody that's like trying to improve just net deck the the torn less or whatever you know it's if it's the first week of the season just focus on on your your list and and just uh net deck someone just so you get the engine down correctly and then when it gets down to the end of the season then that then i tell people to add in like 10 techs you know because <laughs> everybody knows how to play against it your list and like that's when you want to add in like the second v guard energy in louis or something like that you know just so you have a, a tiny bit of an edge in the mirror yeah once you get deeper into a format that's definitely a good and again it is very different than a regional a regional we wouldn't tell you so specifically normally to make these changes right because you're going to hit a bunch of people they're going to play a bunch of different things but locally you're going to hit the same 30 people at a tournament every single time with you know maybe a few people here and there changing etc you know what people are going to play or gravitate towards. Like I said, mine is usually pretty obvious. They're going to net deck either the local or the top player who did incredibly well. And I'm going to tell you, I was very often the person winning them. I was one of the stronger players in Washington pre-COVID. Uh, Post-COVID, I have a baby now, so I guess I'm not. But pre-COVID, heck yeah, we, we were there. I played Picaram post-2019 Worlds. Same 60 to four League Cups in a row. Four League Cups in a month. Is, I know, back when you could grind. <laughs> Didn't change a single card. I won three of the four, and I dropped like less than five games between those four league cups. I said I didn't change anything because no one wanted to counter Pikaram because Pikaram was not the BDIF. I was like, if they just played a couple techs or just like switched to spell tag Malamar, because I played Judge Pikaram, that deck lost to a competent Malamar player, but no one wanted to make these changes. And I just kind of steamrolled everyone because they wanted to keep playing Green Zard or they wanted to keep playing Mewtwo <laughs> without enough stadium bumps and the power plants usually stuck, right? So something to keep in mind too, if you see someone farming your locals, you should be teching for them usually because they're going to be there. They're probably going to be there if you're going to win the tournament because they keep showing up in top cut. And once you're in top cut, Anyone in there can win. We've seen some bad decks win tournaments because they hit the right matchups and cut, right? You just got to get to top cut and then be good to go, right? And yep. I think that's a <laughs> that's one of the biggest pieces of advice I can offer too, of just like everything we said, you know, you're playing a good deck. I We both said not to play S tier, which I think is super interesting. <laughs> I wonder if that's just kind of the move, like play that tier two deck that is very good, but not with the target um... on spec. Yeah, like some if it's like as Lugia good, then just play Lugia. It's, uh, that's fine. But uh, if it's a more open format, then you could you could bring a, pretty much the second best deck. Yeah, not having a target on your back in best of ones especially is incredibly good because this is where people pull out the like cute techs that would never beat you in a best of three, but mm -hmm. it's gonna beat you in a best <laughs> of one, right? Like. Uh, shout out to local Corey. We're going back to ADP format, but before ADP Z played a psychic mimic you in ADP Keldeo, right? To beat Mewtwo. The problem was I knew it existed. And so because I knew it existed, it didn't work. But the very first time, the very first game, 
it did in fact beat me <laughs> because it could <laughs> Oko the Mewtwo in return for four prizes, and that was just game over at that point. So it is also important to not be teched against and to play those kind of like, this is a good deck. But not everyone's playing their techs because some people play the jankiest techs in the world that do work in a League Cup. And for those of you who love teching your random jank, a League Cup is sometimes the correct place to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The math behind it is like so incredibly rewarding for you as well because, like, at a regional, you're going to play like six different decks. Mm -hmm. At a League Cup, you're going to play that one person that you think you're going to play. So you're just automatically going to use it. And just winning that extra round is just so important, getting that early win. So you can just ID later. So. Yes. And then another piece of advice for League Cups is to go off of that. The best of one, you will lose. You will go 0-2 drop plenty of times with the great deck. Like I said, I won three out of four League Cups with the same peak around 60. The one I didn't win, I technically went 0-3 drop because <laughs> I <laughs> the person that I gave a ride to was still playing. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm going to stick it out another round before I drop. And then I was like, nah, I hate this. But anyway, uh, sometimes you do. Sometimes you're like, I am unbeatable. And then suddenly you hit that tournament and it's like, oh, you know what? Sometimes you draw pass a lot and it does happen. Mm -hmm. So when you do go to a cup or a challenge, don't let it get to you. Sometimes you do just lose in a best of one. Sometimes your opponent pulls out that tech that they should never play. But you know what works well in a best of one when you know that half the room is playing a specific deck? That really bad tech or multiple tech. Sometimes people spend three slots and you just have to say, you got me. And you just have to accept sometimes you lose League Cups <laughs> because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then your mental will be so much better. Feels bad at reach. Oh, and this is going to happen way more often now because like pre-COVID, the format was way slower. Like, I remember my very last lead challenge. I did not get a single Malamar on turn two all five rounds. And yet, I still won, went 5-0 because I knew my opponent was going to eventually misplay. And, you know, over a course of seven turns, I could take advantage of that one misplay my opponent did. Whereas, like, this for like, well, we, had, we just had rotation. So it might be not exactly now. this format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right before COVID, if you missed that turn two Archeops, you just know you lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. And there was a very brief period of time in that Sword and Shield format where just very quick reminiscing because I played one Sword and Shield format League Cup. That's when the format was the same speed because ADP Z was a deck. And uh, I played attacking Macargo <laughs> to the one league. I already had my <laughs> I already had my world's invite, and I was like, "This deck is so sick!" It, it was super sick, but it was definitely I lost one game in Swiss, and it was because I missed the turn two attack, which is incredibly hard to do. Technically, there's no reason Macargo should be that consistent, but smooth over is really good. But yeah, it was that same vibe of like I literally just lose on the spot. Consistency and best of one is a really big deal. <laughs> Yeah, I have a challenge on Sunday, so I guess the previous Sunday for p those people listening, and I'm just going to play Arceus. Even though Arceus isn't as strong as all the top, like, seven decks, you play the game, mm -hmm. which is all I need to do. <laughs> and then I'll win enough games where I'll get a second or at least a top four. So Yeah, I think that's the last, like, advice for a cupper challenge, or, like, specifically about deck choice for a cupper challenge is definitely just play the game. <laughs> just trust that you can play the game, because you do not... In a regional, you can set up two out of three times, and you're fine. You can go 9-0 if you set up 66% of the time. You do that at a cup, uh, you better hope you're on the right side of variance on that one, right? It's a, it's a very different world in best of one, and unlike online tournaments... You're paying entry fee, you're driving, you're committing time, and you're losing potential CP. Online tournament, you don't set up, who cares? I went on one drop, whatever. I'm going to go sign up for another one. <laughs> it's yep. not the same vibe when you have to drive a half hour, pay 15 bucks, and then go O2 drop <laughs> because you didn't set up <laughs> twice. Uh, one more piece of advice, especially this is more relevant like now when we're recording, once the new season starts, maybe a little less relevant, but... 
you will run into people if you're not going for a world's invite. Like I'm going to use myself. I currently have zero CP. I have been a dad the whole year. I am not going for a world's invite unless I like high roll everything. But you will run into people who are and they will talk to people like me who are like, are you going for worlds? No, I'm, I'm good. Right. Like, I, I'm not going to go. And they're going to be like, oh, I'm going, you know, I have this many CP, blah, blah, blah. Do not let anyone pressure you into scooping because they need to make it to worlds. The thing I always will tell people is <laughs> if you're good enough to make it to worlds, you're good enough to beat me. And yes, I've scooped in the past to friends, you know, people who are incredibly nice before, too. It's like not even like necessarily friends with them, but like, oh, you're just like a really good person. I don't need the CP. And I think you deserve like you deserve a chance to get there. Right. But the truth is, if someone is good enough to make it to the world championship, they darn well better beat you, especially if you're not even going for worlds. If you're not going for worlds and they can't beat you, they're just going to lose at worlds anyway. This is just one of my like rants and one of the things that someone listening to this will get upset at. Do not let anyone pressure you. Don't let, oh, I only need a top four today. Like, oh, good. Well, you better beat me then. And then you play the game and then you beat them and don't feel bad. Don't let anyone be like, oh, no, that was sucks sometimes you do get the bad side of variants but sometimes you get outskilled <laughs> sometimes someone else does just play the game very well and you beat them and that is totally fine so don't let anyone pressure you don't fall for the pressure i guess they will pressure you sometimes but don't fall for that pressure <laughs> oh yeah other like i went like nine for nine cups i still went there like a bunch more cups but i just skipped the friends you know just yeah just goes like you, you've helped me like so many times in the past couple of years in Pokemon, I'm returning to Fuller, so. And it was the same, my attacking the cargo one. I already had my invite. I was like, I'm just going to play the most fun deck in the format. And I did scoop top four to to a friend, right? Who was like, uh, you need the CP in order to have any chance. So here you go, right? <laughs> it does happen. But don't just go with a random person. You know, you better beat me. Good luck. And do not, if you're on that other side, do not pressure anyone into scooping to you. Both because if a judge hears, uh, that can get you DQ'd and there goes all of your championship points. <laughs> so very bad there. But also, uh, just don't be a jerk. Very simple. <laughs> Locke, anything else on cups or challenge that you think we've missed? Ooh, um... So... If you're like pretty new to the game, I would say play a, a bunch of different decks. Because like if you put like I know I've seen like so many players, they'll absolutely destroy people for like one cup only or one like quarter only. And then the very next quarter cup happens and then new set comes out, they're terrible. And so I recommend like everybody just playing like, like a couple different decks. Like there was so many decks I wanted to play at regionals, but Lugia was just so good. So I had to play Lugia. I played Lugia every other regional. I played Lugia, non Lugia, Lugia, non Lugia. <laughs> so, but I would have played so many more decks in like League Cups if, uh, if we had big cups last quarter. Oh, that's another. Yeah, that's a good one too. Don't, this is where you let those like not bad decks, but those other like my attacking Macargo. That was. Tier two might be generous, honestly, <laughs> but that is where you play that tier two deck of like, I would never bring this to a regional, but a league cup. Yeah. And, you know, I can do pretty well and it does help you improve as a player. And I think one of the other benefits of playing different decks is you learn how to beat them by playing them. Like you look at your hand as you're playing, you kind of like see how they draw and see what their actual lines of play are and the probabilities of things. And it makes it so much easier to make other decks uncomfortable of like, oh, you don't actually pull off, you know, the quad power tablet turn as Mew that often. And like, you know, that's something that when you play Mew, you really realize that's not that common. Or when you play Mew, you're like, oh, a single Drapion's not actually that scary versus when you just play against Mew in your brain, you're like, oh, yo, this one Drapion's going to body them. It's like, no, not really. Or like, oh, they're definitely going to hit the quad power tablet and Oko my Arceus with a V-Guard energy. Like, not probably. No, that's pretty rare. <laughs> like, they don't actually draw that well. So that's the other good benefit of playing these other decks. You just learn how to beat them by playing them. And you're like, oh, this is this is a beatable deck, right? Yeah. Like, uh, at Charlotte, like, I went 
001 to start because uh, my opponent was having their very first regional. They played Lugia. They just played very, very slow. It was because it was their first regional. I was worried I was going to be in like high hell the whole time. And, you know, the rest of the next like six rounds, I just went attacking Raikou only. And I did not hit like any other like, like Lost Box or Lugia's until like later. So like I never even used my Vika Vault for like six rounds. <laughs> and I just knew like better lines to play. Like I even went 2 0 against like a Gudra around like five because I just went straight Ra double Raikou and double Arrow. <laughs> so. But you just got sometimes you got to know those win conditions, right? That is <laughs> that is the strat. Yep. And I got one more tip too. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Do it. All right. All right. Don't give any tips on to your opponent about what you're playing. <laughs> yes. Because this happened to me when I was on a, like a, the hot streak in uh, Cosmic Eclipse. This happened every single time. I go, they go, um, oh, you're the Malmar guy? I've never lost a Malmar ever. I'm like, oh, yeah. Greens is such a bad matchup. Oh my god. And then I go turn two Nightwatch. Turn three <laughs> Handlock. Turn four Pale Moon game. And they go, Oh, how much do those Trevnovers cost? <laughs> so it was, and it was only because they just flat out told me what deck they're playing. <laughs> just because of, of, of those like little hints. So yeah, knowledge in a best of one is so massive. And being able to be like, I know what you're playing. I know my whole game plan. And before you flipped anything over is just, it's huge. <laughs> it's so huge. <laughs> Use best of one to your advantage, not to your detriment. Locke, if the people want more from you, where can they find you? Oh, um, I'm mostly post on Twitter. It's just uh, at the lock with, uh, with an underscore and a zero in it. So. Myself, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Mellow underscore Magikarp. Good luck to everyone going to Locals. Hopefully you were able to get something out of this, even if it's just reaffirming what you already knew pre-COVID. That's fine. That, that should feel good if you're like, wait, I do that stuff already. Congratulations! You're on the right path. <laughs> I've earned a heck of a lot of CP through Cups. Locks are just a heck of a lot of CP through Cups. So if you're already doing this stuff, then you just got to play well in addition to following the tips, right? This has been another episode of the Lake of Rage podcast. We'll catch you all next week.